dual screens or multiple screens have come in fashion in the last years but they are not risk-free. There are pros and cons, which I'd like to explain in this video. I also would like to give you some yeah, examples of good practice with two, three, or even six screens like you have in the trading environment. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, economist, posture therapist, author of the Posture Manual. The first thing we're gonna do is discuss a bit of the economic background behind all this. Uh, the, the, the visual field will be contested by yourself, but it's actually well documented. The human visual field is entirely below horizontal, which dates back from the time when we had to be able to recognize predators uh, hiding in the grass. You know, there were no plants at that time. Uh, and therefore, whenever we need to look above horizontal, the eyes will do half of the way and the neck will do the other half, and this will lead to neck contraction. So, message number one, the visual field is entirely below horizontal. But it's not too low either, because you don't want the neck to flex more than 20 degrees, otherwise for the neck rear muscles, well, it holding the head all the way there is like you would come back from the supermarket holding your shopping bags like this. So basically, we want our screen to be below horizontal, but we don't want it to force our neck to flex more than 20 degrees. Then we have the lateral dimension. See, you can actually test your visual field with your hands. I mean, basically here, I'm seeing my two hands, but just, just limit. And therefore, you see the angles, the central view space is 15 degrees on each side, then we can look at 35 degrees on each side and the expanded visual field is 60 degrees on each side. So here you see that, especially with the test with your hands, that in between my hands now can fit one screen but not two. What does it mean in practice? It means that when I have multiple screens, I will spend more time in asymmetric postures or more time with uh, neck rotations and that has also an impact on the strain in the neck. Now, I'm not saying that there are only disadvantages to having multiple screens, because all people who use screens a lot know that they have to, say, switch less between the windows, and therefore they report that they use the mouse a bit less. So if we put all this together now, we can conclude that the most ergonomic setup from a purely visual field is one screen only, because that's basically the only thing that fits into your visual space. But in some cases, when I need to switch between applications a lot or use simultaneously two applications, I will need multiple screens. But you see, the first really key message here is there's a lot of organization behind. Having two screens for, say, having your email permanently on one screen and Excel permanently on the other screen is not a good a way of using two screens. Why? Because you should not have your e email open all the time if you want to be productive. If you want to be productive, you should check your mail three, four times a day and in between uh, work on your projects. So having your mail open all the time is not a good reason for paying the price in terms of next train of two screens. Now, if you're a business controller and you work on two Excels at the same time, say for a, here is the budget of 2020, here is the budget of 2021, well, then it does make sense to, um, to have two screens because even if you split the screen in two, you don't see your whole Excel in the half of the screen. So you see, it's really depending on the activity that you're having at this moment, not the activity that you may have in three years from now. So if I have one screen only, the setup is quite simple. I take the line of my eyes, I make sure that it goes above the screen, i.e. the top of the screen is around 10 degrees below my line of sight, and the monitor is right in the middle in front of me. Basically, the usual thing is you put your belly button in front of the B key in front of the screen logo. Now, let's say you want to use two screens for good reasons as discussed previously. You have two possibilities. Either you put them as a V symmetrically in front of you. This will make that in front of you, where you have the optimum visual field, there's nothing. There's just the frame of the screen. So you see, this is not too optimum. You will be always uh, 
either turn to one side or turn to the other side. So this is the configuration that we have to have if we really spend exactly 50% of the time on each screen, in which case I would strongly advise that you really think the way you organize your windows and your activities. Otherwise, the great thing you can do is have one screen in front of you, which you use say 80% of the time, and the other one on the side, on the side of your dominant eye. Why your dominant eye? Because your dominant eye likes to travel to the side. So for me, the left eye is my dominant eye. It's quite easy for me to look at the left. When I want to look at the right, the neck goes. So you see, I have less movement if the second screen is on the side of my dominant eye. Hence, if I have a Zoom call, well, I can have it on my laptop, which is on the side. You see that I've raised the screen uh, and I work on the main screen. Now, be careful. Here, I've used my laptop because I don't want to bother with two screens all the time on my desk. But the laptop has a different definition and a different size. And therefore, working with your laptop as, say, a main screen can lead to visual tiredness. So if, you know, you use it more than episodically, it makes sense to um, buy another monitor, which is kind of same as uh, the first one. And you see, therefore, the point of having monitors which are not too, too wide. To be super honest with you, rather than two monitors, I prefer to have one curved monitor because this curved monitor will allow me to place the windows exactly as I want. And therefore, sometimes I can have one main window in front of me and some of the times I can split them to the side. So there's more flexibility in using one curved screen than two split screens. One last thing about using two screens. It's not recommended that you stack them vertically because basically there will be different solutions. Either you use a split keyboard and then the laptop is, yeah, uh, say quite low, but it's not too dramatic yet. But to be able to see the big screen on top of the laptop, I have to raise it. And now this one is too high and will lead to next strain. Some other people will say, okay, I can resolve that by getting rid of the split keyboard. And then I use the laptop uh, keyboard and I lower that screen. But now we're in the configuration where this screen is too low and you'll end up like this. So it's really not recommended to stack two monitors vertically. One more thing, how do you diagnose the dominant eye? Well, it's very easy. You do it by this with your hands, you create a window and you look at the person in front of you, in my case at the camera lens, through the only eye that you would like to use if you could choose only one. And here you see that the camera lens is showing my left eye. That means that when I have to look with one eye only, I go left. This means that the main screen was in front of me, the laptop was on the left side. If now you use three screens, we're, well, we're back into a world of symmetry. That means that you have one main screen in front of you, the secondary screen on the side of your dominant eye, and the tertiary screen on the side of your non-dominant eye. Last but not least, in some environments, such as in finance, people have up to six screens, and this is because they have some control monitors for the, for the markets. In that case, we are exactly in the same logic as with three screens, and we have another line on top of them, of these three screens, um, where you have, same in the middle, the most important monitor and on the sides, the, le uh, the least important monitors, but the top row is just about control screens. So you see in this whole discussion, how I place the monitor is almost secondary. The primary prevention is really about rethinking your way of working and seeing what you do on which screen so that you minimize the time spent on the screens which are on the outer borders of your visual field. And sometimes the solutions are a bit exotic. I recently advised one of the participants of my online posture program to rearrange his workspace into two separate desks because he was actually using five screens. But, you know, he was using three screens for one activity, which was early morning, and two screens 
for the rest of his day. Well, if so, you don't need to bother to have them all together. Put them on two separate tables and early morning you're on your three screens which are on one line only and then later in the day you work with the traditional dual screen system. So you're done now. You try to improve your setup as much as you can and then if you have a perfect setup, well, you may take a mini break every 30 minutes only and then the less ergonomic you set up because multiple screens, because using your laptop, because screens too wide and therefore having too many rotations because of asymmetry, because of bad lighting, because of whatever you want, then you reduce the duration between the breaks, i.e. you take more frequent breaks and during the breaks you do my famous upper body reset to relax all the upper body muscles. Check the description for the link.